عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Going ahead with the program that we have, we are tonight discussing certain aspects of akhlaq based on philosophy which was preached in the West as late as in the beginning of 20th century. And it is going to be a brief discourse tonight, but I hope that the point that I want to drive home is clearly understood. As I said earlier when I began this series, the subject requires some contemplation, but the result which comes out of it is going to be enlightening. And therefore I believe the time is come when certain young people who are so well educated, some elderly people who know so much of the world, may also think in this direction that they may not be led to believe that Islam does not offer anything but namaz and hajj. And if at all it offers, Islam has got a particular message behind it. The writer of Jamiu Saadat, Fadil Niraqi, has quoted one hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa which says, he who has his stomach full of food, as we were discussing last time, saturation, having your tummy filled with food and water. He who has his tummy full all the time, shall not enter the kingdom of heavens. The word used by the prophet is, لَنْ يَدْخُلَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَةِ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَةِ He shall never enter the kingdom of heaven. That means the prophet has come to tell us that while I have come to make you human beings on earth, I have come to show you how being mortal beings made of flesh, you can rise into the kingdom of heavens. Something which is singular, singular to Islam. And I shall explain it as I go further. The last philosopher of France who has been talking about existentialism is Sartre. And before him, there have been two. The one upon whom the whole philosophy was based is called Kierkegaard, the philosopher who himself, say himself was a religious person. Unfortunately, the philosophy which developed out of his philosophy is of atheism, but he himself was a philosopher of religion. He says, every human being irrespective of the religion he professes, begins as an aesthetic. What is an aesthetic? An aesthetic is a person who is in search of easy pleasure without commitment. Either it be in the name of hedonism, pleasure for the sake of pleasure like animals, pleasure of sex and pleasure of drinking and pleasure of intoxication and pleasure of everything that is unlawful. Pleasure of the five senses. There is no commitment, no involvement. To an extent that when they preached promiscuity and permissiveness in society, they also preached that there is no need to be committed to marriage if you can get the same pleasure without getting married. You see, gradually they started propagating this and it holds good even up to the late 1980s. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone knows what will happen in the 90s. But they went on preaching, which is called hedonism, that something, if you can attain that pleasure without getting any involvement or commitment, is good. Or... 
Being atheistic also means to be a person of, in pursuit of intellectual pleasure without commitment. Even intellectually, just reading good books. Or becoming a poet, Allah in Quran says, these poets are people who are followed by the people astray because they go on talking. They have to say a lot, but there is nothing to follow up. As Allah Iqbal says, Iqbal bada upadeshak hai. Man bato mein moh leta hai. Guftar ka ghazi tu to bana. Kirdar ka ghazi ban na saka. You just talk. Guftar ka ghazi tu to bana. Kirdar ka ghazi ban na saka. So, there are two types of pursuits. Both seeking pleasure. This is called an atheistic. Allahu Akbar. Many a times my friends ask me while we have a discussion that Mullah Sahib, what was wrong if we would have been asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to just sit down and meditate on beautiful things about his creation and that would have been also a worship. Is it not a worship? Just lay down a musalla, sit down. Of course, if Allah wants wuzu, we'll give him wuzu. But then we just sit down and just think and think and think. Think about beautiful things, about his creation, about roses, about flowers, about, and about things. And tell him thank you. Over. They do ask this. And when the prophet was asked, he said, he said, I know that form of prayers. I know that. For years I carried out myself in the cave of Hera. In the month of Ramadan, in the cave of Hira, which today, if you want to climb, takes nearly 45 minutes to 50 minutes, to reach that cave, where he used to sit and meditate. And Khadija, salamullah alayha, used to go and give food when the time was there. And she never asked him when she would return, when he would return. Never. That I knew. But the Prophet said, to be an aesthete, Allahu Akbar. To be one who simply is in pursuit of a mental pleasure without demonstrating action is to be a useless person. I want you to stand and bow down and prostrate to give a proof that while you are thinking, you are also acting. In your life, while you stand, while you bow down, while you prostrate, you will act for nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The philosophy. The philosophy of namaz having all this action is that we are not those aesthetes. We are a practical person. Kierkegaard says, the moment that aesthetic stage is over and a man is committed to something, he becomes a useful person, the first thing he has got to learn is to learn ethics and akhlaq. So when I was talking about food and about sleep and about laughter, and about many such things which commonly do not affect us because we don't think of them. Many must have thought now that we are being led gradually to becoming inactive people. Quite contrary to that, from rather being inactive, we are being led to being extraordinarily active. And as I said earlier, there are certain things which have got to be put into balance. So that. The shell of materialism breaks and spirituality comes forward. Now there are two things on which I would like to talk tonight and finish it up. One, the illness and disease and the ailment of jealousy. Amirul Mumineen Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullah salamu alayhi says, there is always a difference between a torturer and tortured. There is always a difference between a zalim and mazloom. A zalim looks to be quite powerful. A mazloom looks to be quite oppressed. But the only mazloom who resembles zalim is a jealous person. The only zalim, sorry, the only zalim who resembles mazloom is a jealous person. Because although he is torturing, 
पर ही हिमसेल्फ इज ऑलवेज टॉर्चर्ड हासिद को एकदम नहीं राहत जहान में एंड मौला सैद अलहमदुल्लाजी महसूद आई प्रेज अल्लाह सुहान दैट ही मेड मी वन ऑफ होम पीपल मे बी जेलस बट नॉट ए जेलस पर्सन हिमसेल्फ it's a disease and i still confirm that we have not entered religion i mean i don't say that we have we are not muslims but we haven't entered the gates of paradise and heaven islam as such if we have not understood these diseases of which we are plagued today a society which has not yet been able to cast away that jealousy which is in the minds of people that society cannot claim to be a muslim society although it may pray allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may save us from that society where muslim brother stands next to a muslim brother for namaz while the hearts are not clean ostensibly one within all of them apart تحسبهم جميعا وقلوبهم شتى. You find them to be one, but their hearts are all apart. This is because of that jealousy. But now, what is jealousy according to Islam? Sheikh Tusi Ali Rahma in At Tibyan, in his Tafsir of Qul Auzu bi Rabbi Nas, Malik Nas, Ilah Nas, min Shar al Waswas al Khanas al Ladi, yuwaswis fi sudur al Nas min al Jinnati wal Nas and The other, قل أعوذ برب الفلاق أبت ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد. When he reached this particular حسد, he writes, the meaning of حسد is to wish that a particular gift or bounty or نعمه with the other perishes, regardless of whether you get it or you don't. See, if my son comes from school and tells me, "I am going to work hard so that the boy next to me does not come first next time," and he works harder and harder to attain better marks and to accomplish better, that is not jealous. If people come and say, "Mullah Sahib, now look at this man; he has got a Mercedes," well, I say, "Work hard. Inshallah, you'll also get a Mercedes." and if you don't get a mercedes you will get double r but whatever you get god bless you but work hard when you work hard allah gives you but there is no fun in just looking ani pase che that is the reason why imam al islam says that the only torturer who looks like a tortured man is hasid because he is so uneasy all the time thinking why why and why about others so when when a person starts thinking that may i work hard to be as affluent as the other to be as knowledgeable as the other to be as influential as the other to have as much of intellect and wit and humor as the other then that does not mean it is jealousy try hard but the moment you wish downfall of the other regardless of whether you attain it or not I have related this once, perhaps twice, but I must say it again for my for the benefit of young people who are listening in English, because I might have related this in Urdu. When Shaitan was asked, "Is there anyone worse than him during the in the creation?" He said, "Yes, there is one." Pharaoh asked him. Is there anyone worse than you and me? Because Pharaoh claimed to be God. Shaitan is one of those. So perhaps we too are the worst. Shaitan said there is one third person who is worse than both of us. So Pharaoh asked him, "Who can he be?" He said, "There is one in the neighborhood, just in the location so and so. There is one man who has a cow which yields good milk, very good milk." Say ordinarily, if it is one pint or two pints, 
this cow is yielding about say four, five, six pints. And next door to him, there's a gentleman who just looks at pail after pail being filled by the cow and just cries. Hi, 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 why, why, why? So one day I went to him and I told him, I said, but why do you cry? He said, look at this. The cow is yielding six to seven pails of milk. Allah Akbar. No one in the town has got that much. So I told him, don't worry, tomorrow, inshallah, I'm going to get you a calf as good as this, and you start also milking the cow, and inshallah, you will get six, seven pails. And he looked at me and said, it seems that you are a fool. I don't care whether I get one pail or half. He should not get. The question is, he should not get. So when you wish the destruction of the other, regardless of whether you yourself are blessed or not, that is jealousy which is actually penetrating at this particular moment within the people, trying to demolish each other. Rather than trying to rise together, we are trying to pull people. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa Someone made a joke and said, in Jahannam somewhere, there was someone who was trying to come out and someone was trying to pull him back. And do you know which community they belong to? Need not telling. Anyway, <laughs> the question is that if we start pulling each other like that, back into the well of fire, to say that, all right, I will not allow you to go forward. I will not allow you to rise. And if you will rise, I will demolish you by character assassination, by 101 means. And tell me, where is that Islam? Where is that faith? Have we entered the gate of paradise? We haven't. That is one. And it is for this reason that when Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi sat on member in Kufa and said that remember the first blood was shed and spilled because of jealousy. First. When Adam had two sons, two brothers, and one offered a sacrifice, it was accepted because it was a sacrifice, genuine and sincere. And the other one offered a sacrifice in the name of God, but it was not genuine and not sincere. And Allah is the one who knows the near. So the one which was not sincere, not genuine, was not accepted. And that fellow killed his brother only because there was a fire of jealousy within him rather than mend his own ways and give a sacrifice which was genuine he decided to kill and this is exactly the illness that we are suffering from and unless we get ourselves purified of this so now try to unite these two things for a few minutes only and then it is over jealous i am naudhu billah and at the same time, I have got a wagging tongue. What will happen? Tell me. Out of jealousy will come out the venom and poison from the tongue. Sometimes people do not know even how to talk. You find that the talk that comes out of the mouth is venomous and poisonous. The same thing could have been said very politely could have been said in a different manner. In Gujarati, how often have we heard to say some, to tell someone, hey, Kana. Kana means one who has got a strike in one eye. Hartal. We call him Kana. To call someone Kana is to abuse. Is it not? Of course it is to abuse. But tell him, bhai, tami aankh kem khoi is something else. To tell him how did you lose your eye is something else. And to tell him. So, and there are many examples. But we give this example to say that the venom and the poison, where does it come from? Is there any poisonous gland here in his mouth? No, you will not find any gland. He is not a snake. The gland, the poison is in the jealousy most of the time. In the jealousy which is within which withholds him 
from appreciating anything that is good. Anything that is good. You do some good, something within rises and tells him, say that this is bad. Say that this is useless. Say that this is harmful. So that the value of the service given, or the value of the talk given, or the value of whatever good turn done is diminished. Not because of anything else, but that fire of envy and jealousy, which is gradually uh, killing us. If we remove this, not only shall we enter the gates of heaven, but we shall see, we shall see happiness on earth conjoined with happiness in heaven. If try to understand every word I say. Then when we say salamu alaikum, it will be meaningful and purposeful. Then when we shake hands, it's going to be cordial, friendly, and fraternal. Today we are cheating each other. By the time you turn your back, I'm trying to stab you. By the time you turn your back, what sort of deen is this? So the shortcoming is in the shortcoming of akhlaq. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand the meanings of it. Wassalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته